Hey guys, today I'll be teaching you how to make this creamy lobster pasta. This pasta was so good and I'm really excited to show you guys, so let's get started with the video. Begin by prepping your ingredients. Shred some Parmesan cheese. And some Parmigiano Reggiano. Then finally chop some fresh parsley. I recently learned that if you pull the parsley through a cheese grater, it's easier to pick the leaves off. When you finish chopping your parsley, set it to the side. Next, in a large pot of boiling water, add 5 lobster claws. Boil the lobster claws for 5 minutes. When your lobster claws have finished cooking, remove the meat from the shells. Once you remove the meat from the shells, chop them into bite-sized pieces. When you're finished, set your lobster claw meat to the side. Next, remove the meat from three lobster tails. Cut the top of the lobster tail down the middle. Then open the lobster tail and remove the meat. Make sure to check for any veins or impurities on your lobster tail and give it a good rinse. When you finish removing the meat from all your lobster tails, chop them into pieces. I usually use scissors instead of a knife just because it's easier. When you're finished, set your lobster tail meat to the side. Now, in a large pot of boiling water, add salt, and then add your linguine noodles. Cook your linguine noodles for as long as it says to on the box. When your noodles have finished cooking, make sure to save about a half a cup of pasta water. Next, in a large pan over medium heat, add olive oil. Then add your lobster tail meat. After that, season your lobster. I season my lobster with pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, and Old Bay. Saute your lobster for about five to six minutes. When your lobster is finished cooking, take it out of the pan. Add a bit more olive oil in your pan and then add a half a cup of diced onions. Then saute your onions for about four to five minutes. Once you're finished sauteing your onions, add one tablespoon of garlic and saute the garlic with the onions for about one minute. 
Next, add one cup of chicken broth and two tablespoons of butter. Stir everything together until the butter has completely melted. Once the butter has melted, add 2 cups of heavy cream. Mix everything together and allow your sauce to simmer for about 3-4 to four minutes or until it becomes thick. Then add 1 4th cup of parmesan cheese and 1 4th cup of parmigiana reggiano. Next add a half a teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of pepper, one fourth teaspoon of onion powder, one fourth teaspoon of garlic powder, and two teaspoons of red pepper flakes. Mix your seasonings in and then add the juice from half a lemon. your cooked lobster from before, a half a teaspoon of basil, and one fourth cup of your pasta water. Then mix everything together until well combined. Now add your linguine noodles and mix them into the sauce until they are well coated. Now all that's left is to plate everything up. I added the lobster claw meat on top of my pasta and then I added the chopped parsley from before. And this is the finished result! The pasta was delicious, I think it's going to be one of my favorites. It was so creamy and good. The lobster was good in the pasta as well. I especially like the red pepper flakes, the hint of lemon, and the parmigiano reggiano. By the way, I heated up the lobster claw meat and tossed it in some butter before adding it on top. You can do that or you could just add it into the sauce. I also cut up the lobster tail meat a bit more after cooking it because smaller pieces would be more well dispersed than bigger pieces, but this is also optional. Alright, that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Everything I used in this video will be down in the description below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye! Hey everyone, today I'll be teaching you how to make Snoop Dogg's Lobster Thermidor. Yeah, you heard me right. It's Snoop Dogg's recipe for Lobster Thermidor. Amazing, right? This recipe is one of his signature dishes. And I am super excited to make it, so let's get started. We're going to begin by cutting this lobster in half. I got this lobster from Publix and I had them steam and season it. Turn the lobster on its back and using a sharp knife, cut it in half. Remove the innards of the lobster. And then after that, remove the meat and place the meat inside a small bowl. Make sure you clean and devein your lobster meat. Rinse the lobster shell until it's completely clean. After you've done this with both lobsters, place it on a prepared baking sheet. Dry the inside and the outside of the lobster shell. Once dry, set it to the side. Now we're going to prep our ingredients. 
chop up two shallots, some green onions, and parsley. Then shred one cup of Gruyere cheese. Then crush some Ritz crackers. The recipe calls for buttery crackers and I looked it up and Ritz crackers are the best buttery crackers so that's the ones I used. Now chop up your lobster. Now that all of our ingredients are prepped and ready to go, we can begin making the dish. Prepping your ingredients before creating the main dish will make it a lot easier when you're cooking. In a skillet over medium heat, Melt 4 tablespoons of butter. Then add your shallots and 2 teaspoons of minced garlic. Cook them for 30 seconds. After that, gradually add 1 fourths cup of flour. And then whisk. Cook for about two minutes, whisking until the mixture is a thick and pale yellow. Then add one third cup of dry white wine. For cooking you want a wine that has a high acidity to it, so the dry white wine that I chose was Pinot Grigio. Now add two cups of heavy cream. Then add one teaspoon of dry mustard, one teaspoon of salt, and one half teaspoon of black pepper. Now add one cup of Gruyere cheese and one cup of grated Parmesan cheese. Mix everything together until well combined. This wasn't in the recipe, but I added 1 half teaspoon of Creole seasoning and just a little bit of liquid seafood boil. Now add your lobster meat. This recipe actually calls for three lobsters, but three lobsters would have been really expensive. So I just cooked some tiny lobsters that my mom gave me. In a small pan, I melted some butter and then placed the chopped lobster inside the pan. Then I added pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, Creole seasoning, and Old Bay. When the lobsters were done cooking, I chopped them up some more and then I placed them inside my mixture.
Once everything is well combined, remove the skillet from the heat. Place the mixture inside the lobster shells. Then sprinkle your crushed crackers on top of each lobster. Place your lobsters under broil for 4 to 5 minutes until the tops are golden brown. While the lobsters were cooking, I decided to cook some asparagus to go with it. So in a large skillet, melt about a tablespoon of butter, then cook your asparagus in the pan over medium heat. Then I added a bit more butter. Then add some pepper and salt. Oh, and you don't need a bunch of salt, just about a dash of salt will do. Saute the asparagus until it becomes slightly bendy. When your lobster is finished cooking, add parsley and green onions and you are all finished. This is how mine came out and oh my goodness gracious, does it look fancy. This has to be the fanciest thing I've ever cooked. I'm so proud of it. I mean, just look at how pretty it is. Just like, honestly, it's so pretty. Snoop Dogg's recipe is actually really simple and I think it would be really easy to do. If you ever wanted to make it, I totally think you could do it. I had no idea Snoot Dog could cook like this before, and now I'm just extremely impressed. Thank you, thank you so much for watching the video. Everything I used will be in the description below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye! Alright, let me try it real quick. You need a picture of anything? Oh, okay. I just like... want to get your reaction. Oh. Oh, it's good. Ooh, you like it? Mm-hmm. I didn't know what this. I didn't know what the what the middle and stuff was, but it's good. I need some lemon on it though. Let me put some lemon on it. I don't know if that's what you're supposed to do, but I'm gonna be good with some lemon. While we eat our thermidor. Lobster thermidor. So delicious. <laughs> hey everyone, today I'll be teaching you how to make this delicious crab stuffed lobster with a side of pasta. The lobster is well seasoned, the stuffing is delicious, and the pasta is creamy and good. So let's get started with the video. Start by finely chopping some onions and peppers. I already had some chopped peppers and onions, but I went ahead and chopped them some more just so they were more fine and in small little pieces. I totally did chop peppers, but I forgot to film myself doing it. <laughs> yeah. But um, just imagine that I did it. Now cut up some green onions. Okay, for this recipe, we're going to be chopping some fresh parsley. So basically all I did was bunch the parsley all up into a ball in my hand and started chopping it until it was nice and fine. When you're finished chopping the parsley, place it into a small bowl and then set it to the side. In a small skillet, melt some butter at medium heat. Then place 1 4th cup of your finely chopped peppers into the skillet and 1 4th cup of your finely chopped onions as well. Saute your vegetables until they're translucent. 
Make sure to season your vegetables. I only season my vegetables with some salt and pepper. When you're finished, take your vegetables off of the heat to cool. Then add your sauteed vegetables. Now add 1 4th cup of green onions and 1 tablespoon of parsley. Mix everything together until well combined. Then add 2 tablespoons of egg whites. After that, add 1 tablespoon and 2 teaspoons of mayonnaise, 2 and 1 half teaspoons of fresh lemon juice, 1 half teaspoon of Wickershire sauce, and 1 and 1 half tablespoon of Dijon mustard. Mix everything together until well combined. Now we're going to add our seasonings. So you're going to add 1 4th teaspoon of onion powder, 1 4th teaspoon of garlic powder, 1 4th teaspoon of Old Bay, 1 4th teaspoon of Creole seasoning, and 1 4th teaspoon of pepper. Then add 1 16 ounce can of lump crab meat. Now we're going to fold the crab meat into the mixture. Make sure you fold everything until well combined. So now you are finished with your crab stuffing. I'm not even kidding, it smells so, so good. All right, now put some plastic wrap on that and put it in the fridge until you're ready to use it. Now place your lobster on a tinfoil covered baking sheet. Place the lobster in a 425 degree oven for five minutes. Now, add some melted butter to your lobster. You want to really coat it in the melted butter. After that, add your favorite seasonings. I added some pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, creole seasoning, and Old Bay seasoning. Now cut the lobster down the middle. We're going to create an opening for the crab stuffing to go in. When you're finished, add the crab stuffing into the opening of the lobster. Add some more melted butter on the lobster and on the crab meat as well. Okay, so now coat the crab stuffing in breadcrumbs. Place the lobster back in the oven for 15 minutes. After I took the lobster out of the oven, I added some more seasonings. I added some paprika for color, parsley, lemon pepper, creole, some more onion powder, pepper, you know, just so it's really well seasoned. Basically, just add some more of your favorite seasonings to the lobster. Then I coated it in more melted butter and stuck it back into the oven for 10 more minutes. All right, so now we're just gonna make a quick pasta. Melt three tablespoons of butter in a pan. Now just by saying peppers three times, peppers, garlic, and onions will magically appear inside your pan. It's totally true and not an excuse for why I didn't film myself putting in the peppers, onions, and garlic. Alright, so I believe I added one tablespoon of garlic, one fourth cup of onion, and one fourth cup of peppers. Although I believe I added some more as I went along. Don't forget to season your vegetables and saute them until they're translucent. Add one cup of heavy whipping cream and one cup of chicken broth. Add 
add one ounce of cream cheese. Then add one fourth cup of Parmesan cheese. Then just add some of your favorite seasonings. As always, I'm using Creole, garlic powder, onion powder, pepper, and a teaspoon of liquid seafood oil. This pasta is to taste, so you can add even more seasonings like red pepper flakes, some oregano, just anything that you like. Later on, I added some Italian mixed cheese and some mozzarella cheese. It's literally an anything goes pasta, and it is delicious. Now add some noodles. My favorite noodles to use are thin spaghetti noodles. You can also use linguine noodles or fettuccine noodles. I add some more chicken broth and heavy whipping cream just so it stayed nice and creamy. Then I added some more mozzarella, some more cream cheese, some of the parsley we chopped up earlier, and some creole. Remember, this was just a quick pasta to go with the lobster. You can add whatever you want to it that makes it taste good to you. Alright, you are finished once you've tasted your pasta and it seems good to you. Alright, you are all finished. Add some of the green onions and some diced tomatoes to the pasta and it'll take it to a whole new level. This is so good. The pasta was good, the lobster was good, everything about it was just amazing. Alright, that's it for this video. In the next video, I'll be teaching you how to make crab cakes with the leftover crab stuffing. Thank you so much for watching. Everything I used in the video will be in the description below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye! Hey everyone, today I'll be teaching you how to make this delicious lobster pizza. It is so, so good. The crust is crispy on the outside and fluffy on the inside. It's cheesy and it's packed with flavor. Alright, so let's get started with the video. Pour two and a half cups of warm water into a bowl. Then add a tablespoon of sugar and one teaspoon of dry active yeast. Mix that all together and then wait about 10 minutes for it to bloom. The reason you wait for your yeast to bloom is so that you make sure that it's still alive, it's not dead. Now add two tablespoons of olive oil, one tablespoon of kosher salt, and five tablespoons of flour. I ended up using all-purpose flour because I couldn't find any bread flour, but I would recommend using bread flour. Alright, so just attach the bowl to a stand mixer. To make pizza dough, you do not need a stand mixer, just to point that out. You can always mix it in a regular bowl. After a while, the dough became liquidy, and I'm pretty sure it's because I turned up the speed on the stand mixer. I also should have added more flour if it was becoming wet and slowed down the speed. It is a wet dough, but this is too wet, so I was supposed to add more flour until it was manageable and it turned into dough. I'm telling you this so you don't do this extra step that I did, where I floured a bowl, put the dough inside the bowl, and just added more flour in until it was manageable, which I could have done in the stand mixer. But again, I didn't realize. So, this is me adding more flour, mixing it all together, which I could have done in the stand mixer. When it was manageable enough and I could pick it up without it sticking on my hand as much, I started kneading the dough. I think I kneaded the dough for about 10 to 20 minutes. The way you know the dough is done is if you stretch the dough and you can stretch it without it tearing. So when I finally accomplished that, I was finally done with the dough. So I separated the dough into four pieces, which by the way, I'm pretty sure you could separate into more pieces, unless you really like a thick dough. 
Anyway, I oiled up the container and then put the dough ball into the container and used the dough as kind of like a way to oil up the sides of the container. By the way, the container I used, way too small. The other containers I used though, those were good. The oil in the container makes it easier for you to take out the dough, it keeps the dough from drying out, and it helps brown the crust. So you want to get a container twice the size of the dough ball because it is going to rise and get bigger. After you put all your doughs into a container, put it in the fridge and let it rise for up to 3 days to a week. You could also age it for 24 hours and it would be ready, but I prefer aging it for a week. Aging the dough for a week makes the crust taste better, it becomes crispy, and the flavor is more delicious. Okay, so it's been a week. Now we're ready to make our lobster pizza. Right here we have the lobster. I already took the lobster meat out of the shell. Now just roughly cut up the lobster meat. It doesn't have to look perfect, trust me. In a small pan, melt some butter. Then add your lobster meat. Now add your seasonings. The seasonings I added were pepper, Old Bay, Creole seasoning, and some paprika for color. When your lobster is tight and not mushy, that's when it's done. When you're finished cooking, set your lobster to the side to cool. Once your lobster is cooled, place it on a cutting board. Now chop up your lobster into little bite-sized pieces. When you're finished, set your lobster to the side. Now we're gonna chop some basil. I don't know if you guys know, but I didn't know, so I'm gonna tell you guys so you know, you know? This is how you chop basil. Layer the basil leaves on top of each other. Then roll up the basil and start cutting it. When you're finished, set the basil to the side. Next, shred some low moisture whole milk mozzarella cheese. Specifically, low moisture whole milk mozzarella cheese. It's the best cheese for pizza. After you finish with that, cut up some pieces of fresh mozzarella cheese. When you're finished, place your mozzarella cheese into the fridge and don't take it out until you need it. Cold mozzarella cheese is best for pizza. Alright, now take out an iron skillet. Add some olive oil, about one half teaspoon or one fourth teaspoon of cornmeal, and some Italian seasoning or oregano. Then completely cover and coat the inside of the iron skillet. When you're finished, take out your dough. Proceed to stretch out your dough until it's big enough to fit inside the iron skillet. Just pick it up and keep turning it. Let gravity do all of the work. Then place it inside the iron skillet. Now proof the dough for about 30 minutes. While the dough is proofing, we're going to make our white sauce. Place 4 tablespoons of butter inside a pan. Melt the butter and then add 1 teaspoon of garlic. Saute the garlic for about 30 seconds. Add 1 cup of heavy whipping cream. 
Then add 1 4th teaspoon of garlic powder, 1 4th teaspoon of onion powder, 1 4th teaspoon of pepper, and 1 4th teaspoon of liquid seafood boil. After that, add 1 4th cup of Parmesan cheese and 1 3rd cup of Italian blend mixed cheese. Once you've mixed everything together and the sauce has become thick and everything is well combined, you are finished. Once the dough is done proofing, you're going to want to put it on the stove at medium heat. Begin to place your sauce onto the pizza. Spread the sauce all around the pizza. Now add your mozzarella, starting at the edge and then filling in as you go along. After that, add your fresh mozzarella. Just a few pieces around the pizza. Then add your chopped lobster. Let the pizza cook on the stove for about 8 minutes. Then place it inside a 475 degree oven. Then cook it until it browns on top and the cheese is melted. You know, until it has it, that real pizza look. That, that's the best way I can describe it. Like when it looks like a pizza. For me, I think it was about 7 to 10 minutes until it was fully cooked. After it's done cooking, take it out of the iron skillet and place it on a cooling rack. Now add some fresh diced tomatoes the basil we sliced up earlier, and some oregano. And you are all finished! And let me just tell you guys, this pizza is so, so good. I had to make two because my parents ate the first one and then my mom asked me to make another one. But it is really, really good. I even think it's better than the lobster pizza at Red Lobster's. It's just that good. The crust is crispy on the outside, but soft on the inside. The white sauce ma makes the whole thing taste delicious. Fresh tomatoes and basil enhances the flavor. I could go on and on, but I think this video is long enough. So thank you so, so much for watching the video. Everything I used will be in the description below. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye. Hey everyone, today I'll be teaching you how to make fried lobster and waffles with spicy syrup. This was delicious and fun to make, so let's get started with the video. We're going to begin by making our waffles. In a bowl, add 1 and 3 fourths cup of flour, 1 and a half teaspoons of baking powder, 1 teaspoon of baking soda, and a half a teaspoon of salt. Whisk your dry ingredients together until well combined and then set your bowl to the side. Next, separate three eggs. Take the bowl with the egg whites and then beat the egg whites with an electric mixer until stiff peaks form. When you're finished, set your egg whites to the side. Now, in a large bowl, add your egg yolks and one third cup of sugar. Beat your egg yolks and sugar together until your mixture is a pale yellow.
Once your mixture is a pale yellow, scrape down the sides of your bowl. Then add a half a cup of unsalted melted butter. Once you've mixed the butter into your mixture, add 1 teaspoon of vanilla extract and 1 and 3 fourths cup of buttermilk. When you've mixed all your ingredients together, scrape down the sides of your bowl and then set your wet ingredients to the side. Now take the bowl with your dry ingredients and create a well in the center. Then pour your wet ingredients into your dry ingredients. Whisk your wet ingredients and dry ingredients together until almost combined. After you've done that, use a spatula to gently fold the egg whites into your batter. Once you've folded in your egg whites and your batter is smooth, you can now begin cooking your waffles. Now heat up your waffle maker and grease it with butter. Next add 1 3rd cup to a cup of your batter. The amount of batter you use will depend on the shape and size of your waffle maker. Spread your batter throughout the waffle maker, and when you're finished, all you have to do is cook your waffle. When you finish cooking your waffle, take it out of the waffle iron. Then just repeat this process until you run out of batter. Now we're going to make our spicy syrup. In a saucepan, add a half a cup of maple syrup, three tablespoons of honey, one fourth teaspoon of salt, one fourth teaspoon of pepper, one fourth teaspoon of chili powder, one fourth teaspoon of cayenne pepper, and one teaspoon of paprika. Then mix everything together until well combined. When everything is mixed together, bring your mixture to a boil. Once your syrup has been brought to a boil, remove it from the heat. Then let it stand for 15 to 30 minutes to allow the flavors to blend together. Then strain your syrup. Straining your syrup is optional, however it's going to be even more spicy if you don't. Then just place your syrup in the fridge until you're ready to use it. Next we're going to prepare our fried lobster. Cut the top of the lobster tail down the middle. Then take out the meat but do not remove it from the shell. 
Cut the top and bottom of the lobster tail to check for any veins or impurities. Then give it a good rinse. I'm also going to be frying some shrimp that I've already deveined and deshelled. Next, season your lobster and shrimp. I seasoned my seafood with pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, Old Bay, and Cajun seasoning. When you finish seasoning your lobster and shrimp, set them to the side. Next, in a bowl, add a half a cup of buttermilk, one egg, and about a teaspoon of Old Bay hot sauce or regular hot sauce. Mix all these ingredients together until well combined. When you're finished, set it to the side. Next, in a dish, add one cup of flour, pepper, paprika, onion powder, garlic powder, and Cajun seasoning. Then mix your seasonings into the flour. When you're finished, you can begin coating your lobster and shrimp. Dip your lobster tail meat into the buttermilk mixture. Make sure it is completely coated. Then coat it in your flour mixture. Once your lobster is completely coated, set it to the side. Then coat your shrimp. Fill a pot or a deep fryer with vegetable oil and then heat it up to 350 to 375 degrees. Then fry your shrimp for about 2-3 to three minutes or until crispy and golden brown. When your shrimp have finished cooking, take them out of the pot or fryer and then place them on a wire rack or a paper towel cover plate. Next, fry your lobster for about 5 minutes or until crispy and golden brown. When your lobster has finished frying, take it out of the fryer or pot and then place it on a wire rack or paper towel covered plate. When you finish frying your lobster and shrimp, you can plate everything up.
And this is the finished result. Everything came out so well! The lobster and shrimp were crispy, well seasoned, and perfectly cooked. The waffles tasted amazing, the spicy syrup was a perfect balance between sweet and spicy. Overall, I think this is a pretty good dish! I hope you guys like it too! That's it for this video, thank you guys so much for watching! Everything I used in this video will be down in the description below, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe! Bye! Hey everyone, today I'll be teaching you how to make this delicious lobster risotto. I'm gonna be honest, I totally improvised this entire recipe. This was my first time making risotto, but it came out really well, and I'm excited to show you how I made it. Let's get started with the video! We're gonna begin by cutting a whole lobster in half. I got this lobster from Publix and they steamed it for me and they even seasoned it. Uh, they asked if I want seasoning first and I was like, yeah! And when I was doing the recipe, I realized it is totally unnecessary to have it seasoned. So uh, don't even bother with that. <laughs> After you finish cutting it open, remove the innards and the lobster meat. Then clean the inside of your lobster shell. You're also going to want to devein and clean your lobster meat. Cut and peel a carrot. Then chop up a tomato and an onion. Set your ingredients to the side. Now we're going to make a lobster stock. In a large pot, pour 3 cups of water and 1 cup of dry white wine. Bring it to a boil and then add your lobster shells. Then add your chopped vegetables. Then add one bay leaf, some pepper, a dash of crushed red pepper flakes, a teaspoon of garlic, and some thyme. Reduce to a simmer and then let it cook for 20 minutes. Pour your lobster stock through a fine mesh strainer into a bowl. Set your lobster stock to the side. In a large skillet over medium heat, add one tablespoon of olive oil. Then add two tablespoons of chopped onions. And one teaspoon of minced garlic. Saute for about one to two minutes and then add one and one half cup of arboreal rice. Cook the rice for one to two minutes, 
and then add 1 third cup of dry white wine. And then gradually add 1 third or half of your lobster stock. Do this for about 5 minutes until the rice has mostly absorbed the lobster stock. And this is me dumping the rest of the stock in even though I'm not supposed to do that! Which resulted in me having to scoop out all of the broth so I could gradually add it in. The reason why you can't add it all in at once is because you need to give the rice time to absorb the liquids and cook, which is why you have to gradually add it in and let the rice absorb everything before adding in any more liquid. Alright, now that we have fixed that, gradually add your lobster stock. I used about 3 cups for the entire risotto, and if you run out of lobster stock, you can always use chicken broth. When your risotto is finished cooking, turn off the heat as to not overcook it, and then add 3 tablespoons of butter, chopped lobster meat from before, 4 tablespoons of cream cheese, some pepper, 1 half teaspoon of salt, and about 1 fourths cup to a half a cup of parmesan cheese. Then I added some freshly chopped parsley. The rest of the lobster meat. Onion powder, garlic powder, crushed red pepper flakes, and creole seasoning. Mix everything until well combined. My risotto was looking a bit dry so I added some water, I think about like half a cup or maybe one fourth cup maybe. And that's it, you are all finished with your risotto. And this is how the risotto turned out. It looked super pretty, I gave some to my mom and she said it tasted better than the lobster thermidor I had made her previously. Which was super shocking to me. You know, I had made this for, uh, I made the risotto for my dad since I made the lobster thermidor for my mom. They both really liked it and I'm super glad the risotto came out right because, um, this was my first time making risotto, like, ever. It was also my first time making lobster stock, so that was interesting. Anyway, everything I used in the video will be in the description below. Thank you so much for watching the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye! Hey everyone, today I'll be teaching you how to make these delicious lobster rolls. I'm excited to show you guys how to make these, so let's get started with the video. Begin by prepping your ingredients. Dice one stalk of celery, chop some fresh chives, and juice one lemon.
Then set your ingredients to the side. Next, clean two lobster tails. Cut the lobster tail open without removing the meat from the shell, then rinse your lobster tail until it is clean. Make sure to check for any veins and when you're finished cleaning your lobster tail, place the meat back into the shell. I place the lobster meat back into the shell so when I boil it, the lobster meat doesn't curl into a ball. The shell prevents that from happening. It will curl a bit, but it won't curl completely. Next, bring a large pot of water to a boil. Then add your lobster tails and lobster claws into the water and boil them for 5 minutes. When your lobster tail and claws are finished cooking, take them out of the pot and set them to the side. Now remove the lobster meat from the shell of your tails and claws. Then cut your lobster meat into pieces. How big or small you cut your lobster meat is really up to you. I personally like smaller pieces of the lobster, but some people like bigger chunks. Make sure after you finish cutting your lobster into pieces, you place your lobster meat in a bowl. By the way, I used two lobster tails and four lobster claws. Once you've cut up your lobster meat and placed it inside a bowl, you are then going to add 1 4th cup of mayonnaise 1 4th cup of diced celery 1 tablespoon of chives 1 4th teaspoon of dill weed 1 4th teaspoon of salt 1 4th teaspoon of pepper and 1 4th teaspoon of Old Bay and one and one half tablespoon of lemon juice. Fold all of these ingredients together until your lobster is completely coated. When you're finished, set your bowl to the side. Next, we're going to prepare our buns. Take a brioche hot dog bun and cut a thin layer off the sides. It should look like this when you're finished. Do this to all the buns you plan to use for your lobster rolls. Next, we're going to toast our hot dog buns. In a large pan over medium heat, melt about 1-2 to two tablespoons of butter. When the butter is melted, add your buns. Toast your buns on each side until golden brown. Once your buns are golden brown on each side, take them out of the pan. Now that the buns and lobster are ready, we can assemble our lobster rolls. Open the hot dog bun and then add lettuce. I'm using butter lettuce.
Then add some spoonfuls of your lobster mixture from before. Repeat this process with all of your lobster rolls. Once you finish making your lobster rolls, you can go ahead and enjoy. And this is the finished result. These lobster rolls tasted great and they were really easy to make. The brioche hot dog buns tasted great, they were buttery and soft, and the lettuce went well with the lobster rolls as well. The lobster filling was well seasoned and the celery added a nice crunch to it. I think next time I'll add some green onions on top because I think that would be delicious. Overall, 10 out of 10 would totally recommend, especially since it's so easy to make. Alright, that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Everything I used in this video will be down in the description below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye! Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make lobster Tuscan pasta. So let's get started with the video. First prepare two lobster tails. Cut open the bottom of your lobster tail shell. Then pull out the lobster tail meat. Then cut the thin layer on top of your lobster tail. Spread the thin layer apart and look for a vein. Once you've found the vein, remove it from your lobster. Repeat this process with your second lobster tail. When you have finished deveining your lobster tails, rinse them off. Next, cut up your lobster tails into small pieces. You can chop up your lobster tails before you cook them or after you cook them. When you're finished, set them to the side. Next, in a pot of water, add salt. Bring the salt to a boil and then add your pasta noodles. Cook your noodles for however long it says to on the box. In a large pan over medium heat, add olive oil. Then add your lobster. Next, season your lobster. I season my lobster with pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, Old Bay, and paprika. Then saute your lobster for about 5-7 to seven minutes or until it is completely cooked. When you finish cooking your lobster, remove it from the pan. Next, add a bit more olive oil if needed, and then add a half a cup of diced onions. Saute your onions for about 4-5 to five minutes. Then add 1 tablespoon of minced garlic. Saute the garlic with the onions for about 1-2 to two minutes. Once you finish sauteing your garlic and onions, add a half a cup of sun-dried tomatoes. Cook your sun-dried tomatoes for about 5 minutes. After cooking your sun-dried tomatoes, add a half a cup of chicken broth and 2 cups of heavy cream. Then 
Mix everything together and then bring your sauce to a simmer. Next add 2-3 to three cups of spinach and let it cook down in your sauce. By the time your spinach has cooked down, your sauce should be thick. Once the spinach has cooked down, add a half a cup of Parmesan cheese, a half a teaspoon of salt, one fourth teaspoon of pepper, one fourth teaspoon of onion powder, one fourth teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of red pepper flakes, and one teaspoon of Italian seasoning. Mix everything together until well combined and then add your pasta noodles. Mix your pasta into the sauce until your noodles are completely coated. Then add your cooked lobster from before. And that's it! You are all finished making your Tuscan Lobster Pasta. All you have to do now is plate it up. And this is the finished result! This pasta is really good and it's easy to make. The sun-dried tomatoes added a great flavor, plus I really like the spinach in the pasta. By the way, I added a baked lobster and some parsley on top of my pasta for presentation. I think the pasta would also look nice if you added like lobster tails or some lobster claws on top. Thank you so much for watching the video. Everything I used in this video will be down in the description below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye!